Hello, my name is Juha Bunda and I will go through with you this Elisa Videra digital signage service. Elisa Videra digital signage service is as simple as setting a playlist into your music system. First you choose your pictures and videos, you upload them into the system and with them you create your own playlist. Then you choose when and where meaning in which screens all this content is to be shown. By creating and uh, using all these playlists, you use a system called CMS, Content Management System. In this training, we'll go through the basics of the CMS, how to create those playlists, how to upload content, and how to schedule it. After this training, you'll learn about what is Elisa Videra Digital Signage Service how to use it, all the basic functionalities of it, how to upload pre-made material to the service, how to set the playlist and use the functionalities and scheduling of the whole service. Benefits of the digital signage service is to help you with advertising and give more information to your customers, is to improve in-shop communication with customers and also to improve customer service with, with customers. It gives you commercial flexibility and also you can use the service for internal communication. Content is key to the success. By content we mean pictures and videos and all pre-made material you have in the service. Focus on the quality of the content and keep it as simple as possible. Elisa Videra Digital Signage Digital sign is known as DS, and the whole DS is about content, screen, a media player, a CMS known as content management service, and some sort of a housing and a stand. Requirements for using DS and managing it is to have network connection and a web browser, so you can use it anywhere and anytime. How to use basic functionalities. When logging into a system, you need to make sure first that you have the latest Adobe Flash plugin enabled in your browser and also JavaScript must be enabled. Make sure also that pop-up blocker is not turned on because CMS uses for pop-up windows so pop-up must be enabled. When you log into the system first you need to choose the language and after you've chosen your language you need to enter application, username and password. After entering your user credentials, press login. After logging into the system, you'll get the picture of the CMS. The CMS is divided into different sections, and now we, we go through all the sections. First, in the section A, you can see a selected playlist. In the section B, you can see all the playlists you can manage. In the section C, you can see the folders which you have created and which contain the content. In the section D, you can see all the content located in the folders which you have uploaded or created. Section E will be explained in another training module. In playlist content, you can see the playlist which you have created containing all the spots and videos you've added to the playlist. In the left side section of the CMS, you can see the playlists. There are two different kind of playlists. Another one is common, another one is screen. Common playlists are predefined playlists for particular screens. Screens playlists are only for the particular screen playlist. Color indicator after the screen shows the status of the player. If the color indicator shows red, then it means that the media player is not connected to the CMS. If it's green, then everything is working well. If you cannot see the common playlists in this section, then it means that say, there is no common playlist created or your user privileges doesn't allow you to see them. In content group section, you can find folders over there. You can create your own folders and you can manage your own folder hierarchy. In these folders, you can upload your pre-made material or you can create new one. 
In selectable content list section, you can see the content of the folder you've chosen in content groups. In selectable content list, you can find all the spots, pictures and videos you can use in your playlist. In selectable content list, there is a option to create new content. Creating new content will be explained in another module. Also, there is a button which allows you to upload new content from the current folder. Now we go through how you can upload the content into the system. First, you need to choose a folder where you want to upload the content. Then, click on the right down corner, you click Upload Content. It opens another window where you click Add File. By clicking Add File, it opens a window where you can browse your own computer and choose the pictures or videos you want to upload to the system. After pressing OK, then you need to choose is the content going to be shown only on the one particular screen or can you use those same files on other screens as well. If you select a player, then the content will be only shown on the particular screen. If you choose public, then the content can be used on another screen's playlist as well. After that, you just press Upload Files and the files will be uploaded to the system. When you upload the content to the system, please pay attention for these recommended file formats the system supports. PowerPoint is very used presentation software and if you want to use your PowerPoint slideshows in the digital signage you need to remember a few very important things on it. Each slide needs timing so you need to define how long one slide is going to be shown. After your presentation is ready you need to go to the slideshow tab and click there presented by speaker so the presentation must be in full screen. Also, you need to disable loop function uh, in the Pro PowerPoint slideshow. Very important thing is that so the slideshow must be in the cor correct format. It must be in PPT format, which is PowerPoint 97 to 2003 presentation format. If you use the newest PPTX format, it is not supported by the CMS. Now you have all the content in the current folder and now let's create a few playlists. First you need to choose a playlist on the left side. It can be a common playlist or it can be a screen. Then you choose spots in the selectable content list and you just drag and drop by pressing mouse's left button and you drag the file into playlist content. You can place the spots wherever you like in the playlist. Okay, now you have spots in your playlist. Let's schedule them. First, you move your mouse cursor over the spots. There are two icons and on the left side icon you can edit content properties. After you click edit properties, it opens a window where you can schedule the spot. First, time range tells you when the spot is going to be shown. Or by default it has run always. If you unclick it, it opens dates where you can define in which date and what time the particular spot is shown. Next one is the days. There you can choose in which day of the week the spot will be played. For example, if you uncross unchoose Saturday and Sunday, then the spot will not be shown on Saturday and Sunday. Then you can choose daily playback time, which says that uh, what time in the morning or during the day the spot will be shown and when the spot will be ended. Also you can 
choose a loop where the content is be shown. This means that uh, the playlist will be shown in the loops of six. If you unchoose, for example, loops number two, four, and six, the particular spot will be shown in every another loop where the playlist is going to be played. Then, on the up there, you can see three tabs. First, you can skip category tab, but by extra tab, you need to choose the playback length of your spot. By default, it's zero seconds, zero minutes, and zero hours, but choose some time for the spot, for example, six seconds. Then the spot will be shown six seconds, and then the next spot will be shown. After choosing these, you just click save, and the spot has been scheduled. Now when your playlist is ready, let's go through the functionalities of the playlist content. On the right up corner you can see functions which you can be chosen. List shows an overview of the playlist and with the overview you can schedule the whole playlist by one time. Now we've gone through the whole CMS but there are some general functions in the CMS we, which we haven't checked. On the right up, up corner you can see some buttons over there. By clicking help, it opens a manual which you can use for self-education. The manual contains all the functionalities of the CMS. By clicking reload data, it reloads the whole data in the CMS. The difference between browser reload is that uh, you, by clicking reload data, you don't need to enter your user credentials again. By clicking password, you can choose another password for your account. Load USB stick is an extra service and it needs activation. And by clicking log out, you log out from the CMS. Now we've gone through all the basic functions and functionalities of the Elisa Vidara digital signage system. You must also see that the whole system is very simple and very easy to use.